Yes, uh, we're going to get into some high praises, but something is on my mind I want to share, okay? Um, Re- Revelations 2, to, uh, 18. Revelations 2, verse 18. Now, now this is the way I function at times when the Holy Spirit breaks something in my heart repeatedly. I want to deal with it. I don't know why. But maybe after a while, it will be clear. I, one of the enemies of relationships and destiny is sexual immorality. And if you don't understand the, the percussions at times, you can toy with it because you, you can actually have seeming justifiable reasons why you might do some things. The reason is not the excuse, so to say. And to the angel of the church in Tyatira, right? Now, this is Jesus. The Jesus in Revelation is not even the same Jesus you have in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, in Matthew, Luke, Mark, Luke, and John, he was, uh, you know, on the way to rescuing us. You know, we couldn't say he was our savior at that time, right? But the moment he died and resurrected and was enthroned, he's our commander-in-chief. He's the owner of the church. I'm even a foreman. I'm privileged steward. But Jesus is in charge of his church. So if you read the book of Revelation, you'll notice that the tone is different. He speaks like a commander. So he was talking to different churches. If you study uh, uh, Revelation first few chapters, he was talking like, I, I see you are doing this, well done, but work on this area, that's a leader, that's your, 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 your real general overseer. So these churches were in existent, existence then, this is not when we get to heaven. So the body of Christ picks up various lessons from the various churches that Jesus was talking to, okay, and I hope we have time, the second half of the year, to also learn from them. So look at this church. It says, these things, these things, says the Son of God who has eyes. Like what? That's a different Jesus, isn't it? Yeah, there's a resurrected Jesus seated on the right hand. This thing says the Son of God who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. Verse 19, I know your works, love, service, Faith and your patience. And as for your works, the, the, the last is even more than the first. Now, this is commendable. There was a particular church. He said, ah, go back to your first love. You have backslidden. The way you used to serve me, the way you used to live for me, you have gone back. But this one is saying, you guys, I even, your, 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 your kingdom service, your commitment is even better than the first, but verse 20. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. Now, this church at that time, I think they had some... And if you, look, if, you, if you read Corinthians, we study 1 Corinthians. We, we are studying Romans and 1 Corinthians in May. You realize that uh, they had a problem with sexual immorality in the book of Corinthians. Now, in this particular place, it says that there's, there's someone in that church, of, you know, it could be anybody, it could be the lady or it could be a guy, that they seduce people or all kinds of things happen that is about sexual immorality. Now, look at his reaction in verse 21. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. Okay, so God gives people time to step out, whether you are single or married. Now, from scriptural understanding, when there is a time like that, and the person refuses to repent, it's a blessing blocker. Or like Bruce Wilkinson said, 
it opens the door to Satan's attack. The disobedience, persistent disobedience, places you in Satan's territory. Now look at what happens in 22. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Praise God. He who has an, verse 21, stay with verse 21, please. Okay, give her time to repent and to blah, 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 blah. Verse 22 now, okay. 22, right? Indeed, I will cast her into what? A sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they repent of their deeds. I want to say this. One of the things that opened the door to health problems, serious, and I need to do this because we're going to pray after the worship time, so we, we can align. I, I don't know who I'm even talking to, but when something comes to my heart repeatedly like that, one major reason for sick, sickness, some health attacks, sexual immorality. Then that word, great tribulation, is all kinds of crisis. It doesn't happen immediately. It's, I give her time. Great tribulation, unless they repent. Now look at verse 23, which happened to David. Verse 23 happened to David when he made a mistake with Beersheba and he refused to repent. Are you awake? Hey, whoa. Why are we quiet? Are, you, are, we, are we listening? Okay. If your neighbor is sleeping, jab her and ask her, are, are you okay? He said, I will kill her children with what? Death. This is Jesus speaking. This is not Satan. That was what happened to David, uh, that son, that child that the first, uh, what's her name? Was that his name? The child died, okay? That's what happened. Before, you know, mercy came in. I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I'm he who searches the minds and hearts, and I will give to each one according to their works. This portion of scripture helped us, the body of Christ, to understand what happened to some believers if you sit them down and ask some pertinent questions of their last 10 years or 7 years, you, 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 you won't be surprised that some of the things Jesus said here had been happening to them and they refused to repent. And people were praying for them, but they didn't repent. But they didn't even know that they were in those things. Praise the Lord. Um, 1 Corinthians 5 verse 1. Corinthians uh, five verse one. This is Paul speaking to the Corinthians church. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you. He's talking to a church. It's not unbelievers. He said, it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and such sexual immorality as is not even named among the Gentiles. He was very angry. <laughs> he said that a man would even be sleeping with his father's wife. You know, that's a church. Maybe the wife was a younger woman, just like it happened to Jacob, one of the wives. The first son, Reuben, slept with her. And then that's why Reuben was cursed first by, uh, by Jacob. He said, uh, unstable as water, you will not excel. Before Moses overturned it when he was blessing them later on. He said, it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you. So sexual immorality can be happening in a church. Anyone, maybe a leader, anyone can be having affairs, side chick or whatever and, and, and it can be there and it is important as a, the leader of the church to keep teaching these things to rescue, okay, to rescue he said it's actually reported that sexual immorality among you and such sexual immorality as it's not even named, that is, even some unbelievers don't even do that Abba, now you're, this guy is even sleeping with his father's wife, now look at verse 2 and you are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he who has done this deed might be taken away from among you. Because you can be in sin and be priding in it. And be giving excuses and explaining. Verse 3. For indeed, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have already judged, that's Paul speaking, as though I were present. He who has so done this deed, that particular guy, you know, verse 4, he says, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
when you are gathered together along with my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, verse 5. Now, this is what Jesus himself was saying in Revelation. It opens the door to death or premature death or sickness or disease or death of children. Sometimes a father or a mother can open the door to Satan's attack on the children. I've said that in this church severally. Now, look at this prayer that Paul prayed. This prayer has to be, do with death so that the person can, can make heaven. Maybe you are seeing this verse for the very first time. It says, to deliver such a one to who? <laughs> a very dangerous prayer. To who? For the what? Destruction of the flesh that his spirit may be saved in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Any other version, please. Just roll any other version on that. So Paul is saying, this guy, if we let him continue like this, he will even miss heaven. He will spoil everything. So it's better for him to just, you know, he says, NIV, hand this man over to who? For the destruction of the flesh, so that his spirit may be saved on the day of our Lord. Now that line, okay, NLT, then you must throw this man out and hand him over to Satan so that his sinful nature will be destroyed and he himself will be saved on the Lord Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ. Now, what, what he's actually saying is, let's let him go or her go so that he can be saved. But that's the uh, handing him over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, the devil will now use anything to destroy that flesh. It can be sickness. That's what Jesus was saying in Revelation. So just when the person is sick, on, on, on somebody is sick and they pray, 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 nothing happens. Ah, ah. Or the person dies. Satan comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. So when they hand him over to Satan like that, the enemy takes any, any, it could be a mental problem. It could be one funny terminal disease. But many times when so, those things happen to some people, we just think it's just Satan's attack. No. These are the consequences of sexual immorality. But it doesn't happen immediately. We are studying the book of Acts of the Apostles. When the Gentiles started receiving salvation through Cornelius and Peter, for the first time, the Jews, they were, they were, they've been used to God. You know, Moses, Isaiah, uh, all those great prophets. They've been used to that for many centuries. For the first time, they saw Gentiles like us, non-Jews, serving God. So they were shocked. But they now said, okay, uh, if they are going to be serving God, they must obey some of the laws. It was a big fight that Paul and Barnabas stood their ground and no, Jesus Christ has rescued us. Let's not um, put them in the same, it went under the law, you understand? So they now went to Jerusalem and had a, 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 a powerful leadership conference or meeting to discuss it. At the end of that conference, you look at what they came out with. You now see why sexual immorality is a big deal. Acts chapter 15, verse 29. Or you see why you are always tempted. Of all the things that they discuss with them, of all the things they discuss with them, they say, okay, don't bother them. Can we, can we, like maybe verse 28, just to see where I in that. Okay, 20, 27. 26. Glory to God. Uh, okay, 27. After they made the meeting, he says, we have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who will also report the same things by word of mouth. Verse 27, verse 28. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you what? No greater, don't do all those circumcision, all those things, to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. Look at necessary things you told them. That you abstain from things offered to idol worship was prevalent then. And let me say this is prevailing now. We have Christians that visit places now. They do combined honors. You see a woman, a lady trusting God to get married, going to one place, and the same person will come to church and be singing and combine. It's happening. You see men, in name of money and business or even politics, Get into things. He says that to abstain from things, I hope you are listening. Or you are watching Facebook or Instagram. Are you here? 
that you abstain from what? Things offered to idols from blood, from things strangled, and from... I thought they would say, no, they don't even need that. That grace has covered them. Of all the sins, of all the matters that they abstain from sexual immorality, if you keep yourself from this, you will do well. Tell your neighbor you will do well. Tell your neighbor you will do well. So how do I tie this up? The main recommendation that the Holy Spirit has given us is to flee. Tell your neighbor flee. 1 Corinthians 6, 18. Don't play with it. And if you are in it, the Holy Ghost is asking you for repentance. Flee. Don't play with it. Don't say, I can handle her calls. I can handle his calls. I know what I'm doing. Don't play with it. He said, flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he will commit sexual immorality sins against his own body. 2 Timothy 2.22. Play, 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 play. I had a story of a seminary professor that was teaching in a Bible school. He had problems with lust. And he told them, he told them that he had a cable TV then, many years ago. And most of the time when he's watching those things, that's what affects him. So he stopped it. You might not need to stop that. But, you know, he said he stopped it. Then some years after, as he settled as a believer, growing as a believer, he now enrolled for the cable, cable TV again. I'm telling you the true story of a seminary professor. And then the thing began to come back, small, small. The next thing they had was he was sleeping with prostitutes. As at the last time, he's now working an auto shop because he had to leave the seminary, leave everything. Now he's working an auto, like an auto mechanic, a professor in seminary. And by the time he to trust it, he was just allowing those little things because those things affect your mind. Fleeing is not just physical. You know what to flee, right? I know what to flee. That's the answer. Second Timothy 2 says, flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on love with your heart. Another thing you want to do is create boundaries. Say boundaries. In Yoruba land, they say what you will not it, what do you do? You don't put it close to your nose. Don't play with fire. I've been tempted. I know you have been tempted perhaps. The pool of sexual immorality overrides reason. It is when your body comes down that you now say, ah, why did I do it? That's why I think God recommended flee. How many a lady have been talking to a guy on the phone they didn't say yes, but they ended up in sexual immorality because it's not about saying yes or no. It's the emotions. So create boundaries. Don't be receiving certain charts or calls at a particular time. One of the things I learned from, uh, what's his name, Billy Graham, which helped him all through his life till he died, no other person sits beside him except his wife or his mother in a vehicle. That's his own policy. And I adopted it too anyway. Because it can even create an extra scandal when they see a pastor with another woman beside him. They take the picture now. Who is that person with him every time? I was in the U.S. to preach one time. I'd finished preaching. I was on my way to the airport. And they just called the protocol people to go with me. And they put one of my bags in front of the car, the, the front seat. And they said, Pastor Yemi, you're going to sit here. And this protocol lady will sit beside you. I just said, eh? I mean, it was very spontaneous. I said, eh? I said, yes, yeah, so it's against my policy. I'd rather have me and the bag sit at the back, and they laughed. Even I mean, because if the lady is beside you, you know you will talk a lot. It's very, it's very close. It's like going on a date with someone that's not your wife in a private place, and you are talking. Eating, for instance, creates very intimate conversations. That's why some pastors don't counsel people on a date. If someone has a problem in a church. You don't carry the lady to one restaurant in a corner. But what's the problem? Two of you, you know, order food. Eating bonds, isn't it? And then unnecessary bonding. And there's instead of counseling the person, she's not the one counseling you until you counsel each other out. Some men make those very, 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 I'm sorry to say, stupid mistakes in a bid to help another woman. Don't let the devil destroy your life. Sexual immorality opens the door 
to destruction. It can first affect finances. The area that is very, that you want to avoid is your health. I don't know why the Holy Ghost kept talking about health. Health, diseases. And you find the person can be struggling with it. And there's no repentance. That thing can kill the person before it's oh, here's our time. So create boundaries. Healthy boundaries. That is more like fleeing. Places to go. People to talk to. Just create boundaries. Don't, you know what you hear? Lead me not into temptation. It's different from lead me not into sin. That is, don't even lead me into a tempting situation. A lot of people don't know that. Because you have to be tempted before you sin. And so, why can we avoid? As Ashimola said in his office in the uh, UK for many years, the, the wall between his office and his wife's office is transparent. He said he was to help himself. So, when you come to his office and you are talking, even if he's getting tempted, you can see the wife talking there. When you look at it, your body will come down. So, people have different things they do. He said they had to install camera in his office. So that, and you know, the security men are seeing the camera. That helps him. So, create your own boundaries. Sexual immorality thrives in secrecy. All this, I'm doing this one. I, I understand it's just my friend. She's just my friend. You are deceiving yourself. One of my friends was telling me a few weeks ago my wife has access to my phones and everything. Why are you hiding? Why are you hiding from your wife? What are you hiding from your wife? If the matter comes to the ground now, everything will come out. Why can't your wife have access to your phone? Why? And then the, the, your, your, your password is like praying in tongues. Even you that fixed it, you can't even remember when you want to open your phone. Just because you don't want people to, oh, what is that? And it can be the other way around. Great boundaries. First Peter 5, 8, watch and pray. I believe there might be someone in this service or hearing me any part of the world. Maybe you are in London, United Kingdom, or U.S., or any part of the world. Uh, that Maybe there's a challenge along this line. Maybe it's giving you the reason why you are going through what you are going through. And as we partake of his flesh and his blood, I pray that God will heal you. God will heal that family. He said, be sober, be what? Vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a what? Roaring lawyer seeking whom he may devour. Watch and pray. One of the things Pastor Debbie taught us as pastors is a woman can want to show gratitude to you and end you in sin. It starts with pure gratitude, especially if you're an impactful pastor. And that happens to business people too. You help out with our school fees, the children's school fees, the Ekpelesa, Adupesa thing becomes uh, see you somewhere else. Happened to David, just killing Goliath. They never allowed him to rest. Why didn't the men sing? They don't have bars, babies, or what they call it. Have you ever read it? So the women that were singing. David was very handsome. And they, they sang him to, to problems with his boss. And until he fell to sin himself. Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a what? Roaring lion, seeking who made him up. If your esteem is not buoyant, when people show you gratitude, it can stumble you. You just realize that anybody that is like hailing you, celebrating you, you gravitate towards them and almost latch on them. And it's low self-esteem. Ah, you are very handsome. Ah, you sing very well. Ah, you preach very well. Ah, I just like the way you do it. Because you, you need to deal with esteem issues, you just find yourself like, they become like your oxygen. You understand? You just hold tight to them. And that can lead to immorality. So manage your emotions. Manage how you handle rejection. When people hate, my pastor said to me, even when I'm hailing him, he reacts to me. When I'm talking on the phone, I saw this on social media. Covenant University is number one. Glory to God. It just interjects glory to God. All glory to God. All glory to God. Don't, 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 don't be someone waiting for people to hail you. And if you're a lady, this might be your vulnerability. The moment a man, you know, greets you a lot or encourages you a lot and shows that you are like special, you can enter your head. And be carried away. It happens to us men too. When a lady is sending messages to you, oh my God, what a service. 
what an awesome service, which is not bad. It's not bad. I don't, I don't, I don't even stop it. But my own head just needs to be correct. That is God that serves all of us. Say I hear. May thank you not become another thank you. You understand that prayer? You understand that prayer, Pastor? May thank you not become another thank you. Finally or semi-finally. Um, hmm. Contentment. I had to learn. You'll be content with what God has given you. Your husband or your wife. Contentment means satisfaction. You have a marriage. So you, contentment. If not, you'll be making it sound like that woman is always better than my wife. That woman is better. Or that, my husband, I wish he was like this. That I wish was like this. The enemy will serve you somebody you wish. Contentment. Which will show in the way you speak about your spouse. Your spouse is not perfect. Contentment. Because sometimes sexual immorality is rooted in covetousness. No wonder in the Ten Commandments, the way uh, God crafted it for Moses, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or husband. Covet. So it is stemming from, it's what is better than my wife, better than my husband. So I prefer him, I prefer her. And then you begin to treat the person like it's your wife or like it's your husband. Stop that. Be content with your wife. She's beautiful. Your husband is handsome for you. You are a covenant child. You can't be married now. And I won't lie to you. The woman you think or man you think is better, if you be delay, it will be different. Hmm? That bottle of soft drink that is looking cool because it's in the fridge. When you remove it from the fridge, you know the same cocoa. It's the same. In that sense. Contentment. Somebody say contentment. Be content with your children. Now when I say contentment, I'm not saying, Pastor, I should just allow my husband to be the way it is. No. Contentment means, like Pastor Luchi just said, about praying. You pray for your spouse, right? Instead of complaining and reacting. You pray. Lord, this is my husband. Let this grace enter him. Oh, this is my wife. You understand? Because it's your garden. It must be a beautiful garden. You trim your garden. You take care of your garden to enhance your contentment. I don't know whether I'm making sense. I know that I'm not saying your husband is perfect. Oh, he, I, I should just leave him the way he is. I'm not happy. Oh. You can be happy if you and God connect to make it happen. But don't be seeking from a human being what only God can give you. Your husband is not God. Your wife is not God. Avoid covetousness. Don't, don't be behaving like it could be this man. I wish he had a PhD. Uh, this woman, I wish she can preach like this or do this. Don't be doing that. And like I said some weeks ago, Hagar is not the same as Sarah. That Hagar could do certain things that Sarah could not do does not qualify Hagar as your spouse. Hagar has her own problems. Thank you. God bless you. Then um, confess and forsake. You are in it, you confess and you forsake. Some theologians were asking, why did God destroy Jericho like that? If you go and study Joshua chapter 6, why did God destroy Jericho? Ah, human beings kill everybody. If you know the kind of sin, immorality, dirt, just like um, the one of Jonah, uh, Nineveh. God wanted to just clear it off like it happened in the time of Noah. That was why God said, anyone that rebukes this Jericho war, eh, he will build it with his first child, start with his first child, and then with his last child. God didn't want that kind of thing up again. For us also in this context, avoid the wall of Jericho coming up again. It's going to come down. You've made decisions. Don't let the wall of Jericho come up. The boundaries you have created, the decisions you have made, let it stay. Immorality will always come at various seasons. Especially when you are weak or when you are having issues with your spouse. If you are married, you understand that a bit more. 
when you have issues with your spouse, it is that particular season that somebody begins to treat you very well. Either in the office or in your neighborhood or somewhere. I mean, you can even be in the church. Be sober, be vigilant, don't allow the wall of Jericho come up again. And I'm praying for us all. If there's anyone, either you are going through that temptation now, and God wants to rescue you from destruction by his mercy, that as we partake of his flesh and his blood, grace will be released. And we experience recovery in Jesus' name. And there's anyone that, oh yes, mistakes has happened. Maybe it happened a while ago, and you are not yourself. Today, God's mercy will pick you out and get you back on your feet in the name of Jesus Christ. And collectively as a church, let's be our brother's keeper. Let's be our brother's keeper. Anytime you notice by chance somebody meddling in things like that, and maybe this is even a leader or something, raise an alarm in a humble way. Because when I studied that Revelation chapter 2, just like the story of Achan, Short meddlings can tamper with the progress of a church. He would just address the church straight. And he was talking to the pastor of that church. The lamp of that church. Glory to God. Are we okay this morning? Okay. I would like you to clap for me whether you enjoy the service. If you are in Birmingham, you can clap for me. Can we bow our heads to pray? Thank you, Lord, for what I've received. Lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. Lift your voices and pray. Lift your voices and pray. Jesus told Peter, watch and pray so you don't fall to temptation. Don't say, I, I am strong. Watch and pray. Can we pray for ourselves? Don't say, I, mean, I can never do it. Those who have said that are falling flat. Don't, 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 don't say I can never, me. No, I'm past that level. I can use it. Don't, don't say that. Pray for grace this morning. Send me help. Especially as we're having radical praise. We're experiencing increase. As promotion, finances begins to explode. This is one area you'll be exposed to. When you have money, you can start misbehaving. You can start thinking yourself that I can do and undo. When you have many cars, you have a building, you have options. This is one of the things that the enemy tries to use to bring people down. You, you might not have it when you are still struggling. And I believe that people are being lifted. When you have money with you, money, a lot of money, as a man, even as a woman, you see your thinking can become unnecessarily elaborate. You start thinking things that you should not. Father, help each one of us. Even as we pray, if you're in this particular service and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, maybe that's where you need to start from. I want to pray for such persons. If you are not born again, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, just lift your hands where you are. God bless you. I can see those beautiful hands. God brought you here for a purpose. I can see that hand. If, if, can you rise up on your feet where you are? We'll pray together. God bless you, sirs. God bless you, mass. Just rise up. God bless you. If you're standing up, put one hand on your chest and begin to pray. Others, please, let's keep praying. Let's keep praying. Keep me from evil. Let it not grieve me. Let your strength be made perfect in my weakness. Let your strength be made perfect in my weakness. Let your strength be made perfect in my weakness. Deliver me from the deception of sin. It's very deceptive. The enemy will tell you, uh, it's not your fault now. See the way your husband has been behaving. If he was a good husband now, I know I won't do all these things, but it's not. The, I don't feel love at home anymore. It's not the reason you are doing it. Immorality is immorality. People have gone through what you have gone through, and they are still sane. Don't let excuses tamper with your future. Excuses, eh? if not my, my wife, eh? she doesn't talk to me and eh? see what she's doing. If, not, if she was just behaving well, I, I wouldn't even be doing all this I'm doing. It's my wife. It's not your wife. It's not in that sense. It's not. If you're standing up, put your hand on your chest and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come in today. Come in to stay. I renounce sin. I renounce Satan. I confess Jesus 
as my Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, turn my life around. Use me for God's glory. Use me for God's praises. Deliver me from evil forever. And from this moment, I choose to grow in my relationship with God in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Father, I want to pray for these special people. Thank you for, for rescuing them tonight, today. Your grace rescues them. Your grace delivers them. Your grace has brought them into light. Holy Spirit, take hold of them. They will never go back to darkness again. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. The ushers will give you a little sleep. I, will, I encourage you to fill that sleep well, clearly, properly, and um, drop it in the offering bag uh, or with any of the officials when you have filled it so we can reach to you. You're one of the best things that have happened today, uh, 27th of um, April, 2024. Can we put our hands together for them? Please put your hands together for them. Welcome to the family. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your word.